grateful to, I love you. I was just going to talk about recording and now I'm going to stop talking about recording. Great. No worries. Okay. Looks like most folks are connecting to audio. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining and thank you for your patience. We're just allowing folks a few minutes to get on to Zoom. Um, my name is Sarah Shen and I am here to be of service um, to the California Department of Fish and Wildlife for the Exploring Scales Management for the California Halibut Fishery webinar of which you have just joined. Um, just a note to say that everyone is on mute um, upon entry just to minimize background noise. So if you're trying to unmute yourself, um, that will not work at the present moment. We welcome your videos on. We also welcome you to rename yourself with your first and last name and any affiliation if you choose to do so. But however you wish to engage, we're just happy that you're here with us. And we will begin in just a few moments. Thank you for your patience. Welcome folks. Thank you for joining. This is the California Department of Fish and Wildlife webinar series, Exploring Scales Management for the California Halibut Fishery. This is a focused discussion for the recreational sector. And we are just giving participants a few moments to join and get situated. We welcome you to update your name in Zoom um, to show your first and last name and any sort of identifier that you choose to share such as CPFV owner or the name of your affiliation. Please note that everyone is on mute upon entry to minimize background noise. And if you are having any trouble at all accessing the screen share or participating in today's webinar, you should see on your screen right now um, a title page. There's also an email, avery at strategicearth.com. We will be dropping that email into the chat and feel free to email Avery with any troubleshooting needs or send a message in the chat. And we will give folks just another two moments um, to get situated. Thank you for your patience. Okay, everyone, I think we can begin and we will continue to welcome folks as they hop on. Welcome, my name is Sarah Shen and I am from Strategic Earth Consulting. I'm here with my colleagues, Kelly Safe and Avery Kaplan, and we are here to be of service to the California Department of Fish and Wildlife and the stakeholder community during today's discussion. This is a focused discussion um, intended about and for the recreational sector as part of the Exploring Scales Management for the California Halibut Fishery webinar series. Thank you so much for joining. We're very excited to begin today's webinar um, and we will continue to admit folks as they join. A final reminder, if you're having any troubleshooting support needs, 
please email avery at strategicearth.com. The email is both on the screen share and in the chat, or feel free to send a chat message and we will um, come help you however we can. We encourage folks to turn their videos on if you're comfortable. We wish we were together in person, um, but webinar is the next best thing. So feel free to engage however makes you comfortable. So as I said, today's conversation is focused um, on the recreational fishery. This is a webinar that's really targeted to those that are involved in the recreational fishery or have um, an interest in the fishery. Of course, we welcome all others, and we've had RSVPs from Native nations, governmental agencies, non-governmental agencies, and other interested stakeholders. In just a moment, you will see a poll that's going to come up on your screen. This is optional and um, anonymous. If you choose to complete the poll, it's two questions. It will just give, an, uh, give us an idea of who has joined so that we can interact a bit more personally. So Avery, I welcome you to launch the poll. And to all of our webinar participants, I encourage you to um, let us know who you are. Again, optional and anonymous. I also just wanted to take a moment to say that um, I and the Strategic Earth team are third party neutral facilitators. We have over a decade of experience supporting inclusive conversations about natural resource issues. And today we're committed to upholding an inclusive and a transparent dialogue with all of you. Our funding comes from the Resources Legacy Fund, and we are here again to be of service to the California Department of Fish and Wildlife and all of you, the stakeholder community. If you're having any questions or concerns about how we're supporting the webinar series, we um, encourage you to contact us directly at hello at strategicearth.com. And we will send that email in the chat in just a moment. A few webinar considerations as we begin. So once more, technical support, we are available through email and chat. Um, this webinar is being recorded and closed captions are available. I'll just check in with Kelly to see if those closed captions are running. And please note that the webinar at this point in time is available upon request only. The poll and the survey, as I mentioned, are optional and anonymous. And once more, we've muted everybody to minimize background noise for the time being. But once we get to the discussion and the Q&A session, um, we will be more than happy to unmute folks that um, want to engage with us. So we're hopeful for a, a productive dialogue. So if you are wanting to make a comment or share a question, our preferred approach is that you wave your hand. This can be like an actual waving um, because we can see if you have your video on, or if you're more comfortable with the Zoom platform, you can wave your hand via the Zoom icon. Um, and we will uh, track the raised hands and come to you at the appropriate time. If neither of those options are available to you, again, you always have the chat. We wanna make sure that this webinar um, is accessible to everyone and that you can participate how, however much or however little uh, you choose. A few quick Zoom reminders. Um, again, the chat is for support needs. There's a chat, bot a chat box in the bottom of your screen in Zoom in your meeting controls across the bottom panel. If you click there, it should open a box and that's how you can get in touch with us. The raise hand icon um, is used to indicate that you have a question or a comment, ultimately that you wish to speak. At the bottom of your Zoom window in the control panel, there's a uh, button or it says participants. If you click that, there's a raise hand button. Or if you have the option of a reactions button, if you click that, you can select a hand icon. When it comes time to um, have a conversation, we will uh, allow you to unmute yourself. And so what we will do is we will click on your name and you will see a message that says something along the lines of the host would like to unmute you. And it will require you to press accept so that your voice can come through. Again, we're here for trouble support needs, but just know that when you do go to speak, um, there's that extra little step there. So you'll need to click accept. And lastly, if you're wanting to rename yourself, this could help with the breakout rooms later in the webinar. Again, just to let folks know who's in the room, you can click participants, 
um, find your name. There's a little more button and then click rename and go ahead and type first name and whatever identifier you choose to use. A few webinar agreements um, that we wanted to share just because we know this is a, an, it's an important conversation. It might also be a difficult conversation at times, and we really want to support a, a thoughtful and collaborative environment. So we do ask that everybody abide by these webinar agreements and ask that you kindly leave if you are unable to adhere with any of these agreements that are listed here. So really, I'm not going to read them out loud, but they're centered on listening, you know, to build understanding, asking questions and not making assumptions, respecting the diversity of perspectives that you may hear, um, limiting your distractions and your multitasking, and just being present in the conversation as much as you can. So this like I mentioned, is the first um, webinar of a three-part webinar series. And there is a California Halibut Scales Management um, webpage at the department's website that I'll show you in just a moment. And I wanted to highlight there that there are several resources available to you um, that have been posted. And we recommend that if you haven't read some of these that you do so um, following the webinar. There are a variety of materials to help you understand the scales management process, um, the, the approach to the webinar, and then some information about you know, the status of the California halibut as well. So I will just go there now and briefly screen share the webpage. So hopefully some of you um, are familiar with the webpage. There's also a marine management news blog that was shared um, and if you received our emails, then there was a link there. So multiple ways, um, but hopefully this is familiar. If not, I encourage you to check out the department's website. The resources that I just mentioned are shown over here in this box. Okay, so now I would love to um, just introduce the CDFW team, our fisheries experts, and the support team for the webinar series. From the department, we have, this is in alphabetical order, we have Julia Coates, Miranda Haggerty, Christine Lazenia, Kirsten Ramey, Paul Riley, Craig Schumann, Travis Tanaka, and Chuck Val. And our support team includes Huff McGonigal from Resources Legacy Fund, and then um, myself, Kelly and Avery from the Strategic Earth team. So thank you everyone for your support um, for our first webinar. So before turning it over to Craig Schumann, the CDFW Marine Region Manager for opening remarks, I just wanted to um, invite Avery to close the poll so that Craig can welcome our participants in a more personal way and we can learn who has um, joined us. Okay, can everybody see the results of the poll? I cannot, Ooh. but I hope others can. How about now? Can others see it? Um, I can also just read off the results in case the results aren't launching. So the first question was, where do you live or work? Um, so 27 people responded and 41% are in Northern California, 26% are in Central California, 30% in Southern California and 4% outside of California. And then the second question, which of the following groups best describes you? So 15% answered recreational fishing, CPFV owner operator, 11% answered recreational fishing, CPFV angler. 4% said rec fishing, spear. 4% said recreational fishing, shore pier. 19% said commercial fishing. 7% said government or agency. 22% said non-governmental organization. 15% said researcher. And 4% said interested member of the public. Okay. That was a lot of numbers. Um, thank you, Avery, but it definitely gives us a feel for who is in the room. 
So without any further ado, um, I'd love to introduce Craig for opening remarks. Great, thank you, Sarah. Um, can you guys hear me all right? Yes. yes. Thumbs up. All right, perfect. Um, first of all, thank you everyone for joining the webinar today late in the day and your interest in scaled management for California Halibut. Um, it's really nice to see so many familiar names and faces and backgrounds. Um, it's good to see everybody. I want to acknowledge the Strategic Earth team for helping to facilitate this, RLF for, RLF for funding Strategic Earth to support us, and most importantly to CDFW staff. Um, this team you have with you today has put in a tremendous amount of work to get us to where we are, um, and I just want to acknowledge and thank them for that. Uh, reflecting back over the past 18 months, um, I can actually think of a, a few positive things that came out of it. Um, first one, we have improved hygiene. All right, we're all washing our hands a lot more than we used to. Um, I got to spend a lot more time with my family. I wasn't on the road traveling as much as I used to, and my kids were schooling from home. I was working from home, and we had a lot of time together. And I keep reminding myself that that is a good thing, even though it was um, very challenging at times. And I know many of you experienced that as well. Um, another thing was that we were compelled to hit the pause button on our development of an FMP for Halibut. And it was the, the very early days of the pandemic, probably February or maybe early March. I don't know exactly when it was, but I remember specifically sitting in my car on a phone call with this team you have before you today and making the decision that we needed to hit the pause button. And I was sitting in my car because my wife had sent me to the store to get supplies when you know, we had that runoff supplies and everyone was hoarding toilet paper and the shelves were stuck, you know, you couldn't get anything. And, and I remember going into the store and I think it might've been the first time I put a mask on and how weird it felt, how scary it, it was. And um, it just really stuck with me that that was, that was the time when we decided, you know what, let, let's not try to pursue this right now and see what's going on. Um, that actually ended up being a very positive thing. Uh, a couple of reasons why. One, it allowed us to complete the stock assessment that you'll be hearing about a bit about today. Um, it allowed us at the department to evaluate the data that we had and really think about what we at the department want to see come out of this fishery. What do we think is important? And you'll be getting a presentation on that today as well. Um, and it allowed us to pull back from FMP development and really look at this through the scaling process as described in the 2018 master plan. So you know, when the master plan was adopted in 2018 and Halibut came out of the prioritization as a high priority, we kind of just jumped into FMP because we've been talking about it for a few years. But because we had this pause and we had some time to reflect, we thought about, well, we should really, the next step is to look at the management continuum. What do we want to achieve with this fishery? Where do we end up on that continuum? Is that a simple regulatory change? Is that a simple FMP? Is that a complex FMP? We don't know where we're going to end up on that. We're going into this with an open mind. We don't have any preconceived outcomes or predetermined outcomes, what is going to happen. We're gonna rely on these engagement opportunities with you and other sectors to really flesh out what do we need to do with this fishery to make it sustainable or to keep it sustainable. Um, along those lines, I would be remiss if I did not mention the IPCC report on climate change that came out earlier this week. I'm sure many of you saw that um, and pretty scary stuff in there. Um, that, uh, that report articulates what many of us, many of you are seeing on the water Climate change is here, it's happening now. It's no longer a matter of if or when we'll have to deal with it, it's a matter of how much change we're going to have to accommodate. This makes the challenging job of fisheries management even harder for us as manager and for you as stakeholders and users. Shifting back to halibut, uh, this is the very start of this effort. No decisions have been made. We look forward to hearing from you. We wanna hear your thoughts, your concerns, your ideas. How can we improve management of halib California halibut in California? And with that, I'll turn it back over to Sarah to keep us moving. Wonderful, thank you so much, Craig. So the goals of today's webinar are really to engage in a discussion about the recreational fishery um, and to explore where there's alignment or misalignment um, in your priorities and concerns for the sustainability of the fishery, the ecosystem and the fishing community. Um, we will be sharing information about how you can continue to stay involved in the scaled management process um, that will continue for, you know, at least a couple of months. This is just the very beginning of the process. 
Um, we will all together learn about the department's current priorities for assessing and managing the California halibut across sectors and statewide. Even though this discussion is focused on the recreational sector, we will be getting that whole complete look at the fishery across the state. And then we will close with looking ahead to understand how CDFW will continue to advance designing a science-based and stakeholder-involved scales man management process. There. Can I just pause you for one moment? I think we're wanting to help folks with a few slides at this time, because what you just shared was so eloquent, but I think that it's also on a slide for us to look at. Is that true? Awesome. It absolutely is. And I just started again. Thanks for the reminder. I'll just pause for a couple seconds so you can read what I just said, in case any of it didn't, didn't stick with you. Okay. So today's agenda um, will be moving momentarily into understanding California halibut scales management. And this will include a around 12 minute presentation um, from Kirsten Ramey. And then we will segue into exploring shared priorities and concerns. And I know the team is really excited about this aspect of today's meeting because this is where we get to move into small group discussions via Zoom breakout rooms and start to get into the weeds of things and go through some discussion questions and hear from all of you about your questions and, and what's important to you. And then, as I said, um, we will end with looking ahead um, so you know how to stay involved and informed. And there will be a link that's shared for an optional survey at that time. So as invitations went out um, and materials, you know, were posted on the web, web page it's it's easy to understand that when you haven't had a conversation yet and you don't have all the answers our minds tend to take us places so we just thought that we would be clear about what this webinar series is and is not um, and we hope that this information here is helpful so at this time cdfw is not proposing a fishery management plan for california halibut at this time, CDFW is not suggesting any new regulations. We're also not even having a conversation about regulations today. We're really having a conversation about what information is known, what the department's priorities are, and then hopefully hearing from you all about what, what expertise and knowledge you have and what your priorities and concerns are about the fishery. So just to say that even more clearly, today CDFW is really looking to learn from all of you about your priorities and your concerns for the fishery and any questions that you have about the scales management approach. So with that, I will turn it over to Kirsten Ramey, CDFW Environmental Program Manager, and she will be presenting an overview of scales management and considerations that are specific to California halibut. And Kirsten will also be sharing um, the starting list of the department's initial priorities to assess and manage the fishery as a whole, and then some specifics um, for the recreational sector. As I've said, Kirsten's presentation is around 12 minutes, so we will hold questions until she's completed her presentation, but feel free to raise your hand at any point in time, and we will start tracking the queue of questions. So with that, Kirsten, um, I will let you take over and you just tell me when you want me to advance the slides, please. Okay, so how's my audio coming through? Am I loud and clear? Clear. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Sounds good. Well, I'm gonna, um, I'm recovering from a cold, so I'm hoping that my voice will hold out on me, but um, let me know if my audio is going out. <clears throat> So um, thank you again, everybody, for joining us this late afternoon to talk halibut. Um, go ahead and advance the next slide, Sarah. So I just want to um, give a brief overview on um, some background for halibut. Um, so most of you likely know that halibut's um, geographic range extends from northern Washington to southern Baja, California, Mexico. Halibut are generally distributed across benthic um, habitat with soft bottom substrates such as sand or mud and are concentrated in or near and within bays, estuaries and other shallow coastal areas. Um, we have documented the largest reported length and weight for halibut to be 60 inches and 72 pounds. 
although halibut greater than 45 inches are pretty rare. And these are typically females that we find. And the maximum age of halibut is 30 years, but often halibut older than 15 are rare to find. Um, to touch on the fishing season, so it's open year round for both our recreational and commercial fisheries, except for trawling is prohibited between March 15th and June 15th within the California Halibut Trawl Grounds located in Southern California. Um, the different gears and halibut are taken commercially by trawl, set gill net and hook and line and recre recreationally are taken by hook and line and by divers using spears. Uh, most commercial and recreational fishing is vessel-based, although some recreational fishing occurs from man-made structures or from shore. Um, the market for halibut is available year round, but particularly during the summer months, it's primarily, primarily sold in California restaurants, grocery stores, and the farmer's market. Um, sometimes you can find it for sale locally at the dock in a whole or a live condition. And um, almost always halibut is sold as a fresh product because um, it doesn't freeze well. Um, and just to touch on our current uh, management for halibut with, with the department, um, there is a minimum legal size limit of 22 inches total length, which applies to both the commercial and recreational fisheries. Recreational fisheries have a three fish bag and possession limit north of Point Sur and a five fish bag and possession limit south of Point Sur. Uh, for the commercial side, the commercial hook and line fishery is open access. However, um, for both the halibut trawl and the halibut gillnet fisheries, there are limited entry permits required. Um, there are no harvest limits for the commercial fisheries other than there um, are some uh, incidental take limits in some cases. Um, and then there are some specific gear restrictions and area closures that apply to all halibut fisheries, um, such as the seasonal closure that I mentioned earlier within the California halibut trawl grounds. And then of course, um, our state marine protected areas, uh, which potentially prohibits halibut take. All right, Sarah, we can go to the next slide. So this is just a brief shot of um, landings in both commercial and recreational um, fishery. Um, the data comes from our marine landings data system and from our RECFIN database that's um, uh, collected by our California Recreational Fisheries Survey samplers. Um, we have year um, across the bottom. We have halibut take in pounds um, on the side. And uh, one of the things that is um, noticeable is the black line, which is the sum of recreational landings. Um, it it um, can really be um, in comparison to commercial take some years. Um, this is a graph going from 2005 to 2019. That's the most current data we have. Um, the commercial landings take is across all gear types showing the total, um, which was similar to recreational take um, in some years. Um, the gill net take is shown in the blue checker box. The hook and line commercial take is in the orange bar and the trawl commercial take is in the green hash marks. And again, the recreational hook and line and spear combined is shown by the black line. Let's move on to the next slide. So let's briefly um, set the stage for why we are all here today. <laughs> So um, I'm gonna briefly um, give a overview of the Marine Life Management Act. Um, so that was enacted in 1999 by the California legislature and it is California's primary fishery management law. Um, in 2018, the department undertook an effort to amend the master plan for fisheries, which implements the, uh, it's a guide for implementing, implementing 
excuse me, implementing the Mass, the uh, Marine Life Management Act, and it um, establishes a framework for applying fishery management tools. So as part of the 2018 master plan, um, the department undertook uh, what is what was called a prioritization process. And California halibut was identified as one of our high priority fisheries for management attention. Um, it was primarily due to the potential risk to species and habitats from fishing activities and to other species that may be caught as bycatch in the fishery. Um, there are also um, um, considerations with climate change across uh, the potential risks of the fishery and bycatch. Let's forward to the next slide, Sarah. So this is a bit of a complicated graphic, but um, just, uh, just to orient you, um, you can see the, the blue box is where we are now, but um, above that is the prioritization process, which we've already stepped through. So the master plan identifies sustainability as uh, the primary objective and emphasizes the need for a comprehensive ecosystem-based approach to managing our state's fisheries. And it emphasizes the importance of informed public involvement in our decision-making and science. Um, and that is one reason uh, why we are all here today is to make sure that um, any actions that come out of um, fisheries management are informed by our interested stakeholders. So this framework that we're seeing on the screen provides a clear and consistent process that describes how management efforts should proceed and where MLMA policies are addressed during implementation. So as I said, the top component describes the approach to prioritization, which has already been completed. And the bottom half represents our approach to scaling the intensity of management for each fishery. So that's where we are today. Um, we are working to implement the master plan following this framework. And as I mentioned, California halibut rose to the top of our prioritization process. And so our objective is to now determine what scaled management should look like for the halibut fishery. So let's step to the next slide. Okay, so this is zeroing in on the scaled management um, stage of the uh, MLM uh, master plan framework. So um, fisheries can vary significantly in terms of the appropriate intensity of management effort. So the master plan has um, designed and describes a continuum of management intensity and identifies criteria for determining where a given fishery may fall along this continuum. So as you can see, levels of management responses can range from um, something called an enhanced status report, um, and can uh, progress all the way to an enhanced status report um, combined with a complex fishery management plan, or it could, fall, it could fall anywhere in the middle. Next slide. Um, so to provide some more context as to where we are in relative, uh, relative to the scaled management process, um, we are completing the informational gathering phase. Um, we, that included um, the assessment of the status of halibut resource through several projects, including a bycatch evaluation, um, the halibut stock assessment, a management strategy evaluation. Uh, we're undertaking some habitat considerations and um, uh, completing an enhanced status report. Um, those various information gathering projects are at um, different stages of completion, but um, they are all near a final product. And as they are available, we'll be sharing those out um, with the public and stakeholders, um, likely through our webpage and our blog. Um, we are now transitioning into what we are calling the exploration phase which includes several scoping and engagement steps, which is including today's webinar. Um, and then from there, we will um, learn from the knowledge that we've gathered during these two phases, the exploration and information gathering stages to make informed decisions about the appropriate strategies for management of halibut. 
and we'll move into a developing and we'll move into developing and implementing these management strategies at the appropriate scale. Next slide. So uh, we wanted to touch on um, a common understanding of what we know right now for um, the fishery across all sectors. Um, so based on department monitoring and observation by our staff, our scientific staff, um, here are a few of the highlights that we, um, we know about halibut. Um, there are different factors that contribute to the northern and southern stocks and they are inferred to be sustainable at different levels. The sustainability of the two stocks and estimate of stock size is based on the best available science that we have. Um, one thing also that we know is locally caught fresh halibut is essential to our local economies and communities. There are market imposed restrictions on the halibut fishery, um, such as the demand for and the price of California halibut. Um, local demand um, controls the commercial fishery and, um, excuse me, commercial fishing effort and take. Um, current and anticipated climate change impacts um, are, uh, such as the effect of warming waters, um, are something that we are seeing um, impacting California halibut. Um, and also, um, we recognize that uh, there are um, information gaps that are related to climate change that we'll get, I'll get to in just um, a minute or so in my presentation. Um, we know that bycatch includes sensitive, endangered, and non-target species, including sublegal sized halibut. And just as a um, brief reminder, bycatch has been identified as a potential, potential concern in the commercial sector, uh, excuse me, sector, specifically in the Gilna and Trollgear types. Um, and it was one of the main reasons why halibut rose to the top of the prioritization process that I described. Next slide. So internally, we have um, identified, department staff have identified some of our overarching priorities that we would like to see for the halibut fishery um, as a whole. Um, so based on our knowledge of the fishery and our high level goals in line with the master plan, um, these are the current priorities that we've identified. And I'll just go ahead and read these. Um, so one of the goals is to maximize fishing opportunities while up upholding conservation objectives. Um, we think uh, determining the maximum sustainable yield and managing the fishery at or near maximum sustainable yield is an important goal. Uh, maintaining a healthy age structure for the population, minimizing bycatch to acceptable types and amounts, minimizing threats to habitat. Um, it's a goal to continue and expand upon our data collection efforts and to integrate the knowledge, expertise, and needs of stakeholders into our management efforts. Next slide. So I wanted to dig a little bit further into bycatch. So we all have a common understanding of what that means. Um, so it's not always easy to identify target species versus bycatch species, particularly for recreational fisheries. Um, just to reframe us to what the Marine Life Management Act um, defines, um, bycatch is defined as fish or other marine life that are taken in a fishery, but which are not the target of the fishery. And bycatch does include discards. It can be misleading to call all discards bycatch in a recreational sector where fishing is often catch and release. Um, but to help and to help provide clarity, the master plan integrated the guidance of the Fishing Game Commission's bycatch working group into the definition of um, bycatch. So there's a new category called incidental catch, which is fish caught incidentally during the pursuit of the primary target species, but legal and desirable to be sold or kept for consumption. So with this target species are managed to sustain sustainability standards and bycatch needs to be acceptable. Incidental catch can be managed to either standard depending on the circumstances. 
Uh, the master plan provides a series of questions to help determine if bycatch is acceptable and considers the legality of the take of the bycatch species, the degree of threat to the sustainability of the bycatch species, impacts of fisheries that target the bycatch species and ecosystem impacts. So these are the uh, guidance questions that um, the department will walk through to determine whether or not there are uh, potential concerns when it comes to bycatch. Um, what is target and what is incidental take, take can vary between participants over time, but the most important consideration is ensuring the sustainability acceptability standards are met. Um, as I mentioned, the department's currently evaluating bycatch in the fishery across sectors. Um, however, I should, I should say we are not evaluating our hook and line fisheries. Um, and uh, we are looking at um, more than just the halibut fishery. Um, and we're um, uh, looking to have results of that project uh, actually very soon, hopefully within the next couple months. Yep, next slide, thank you. Um, so just to um, get a little bit more specific with our recreational fishery. Uh, so this is a graph of our captain release halibut over time, dating from 2005 through 2019. Um, the x-axis shows the year, the y-axis shows the number of halibut. Um, the, uh, the dash with the two dots in orange is the Northern California um, uh, sum of released fish alive. The um, continuous orange line is the number of retained fish in Northern California. The dashed green line is the sum of the released live fish in Southern California. And the dotted green line is the sum of the retained fish in Southern California. Um, this includes all modes and gears for our recreational um, fisheries. Um, so Sublegal halibut, which are again halibut less than 22 inches, have been identified as a bycatch concern in the recreational fishery. Most halibut that are released by the recreational fishery are released because they are sublegal. Um, this visual, this graphic, um, roughly shows how many sublegal sub fish are encountered are encountered by the recreational fishery while in pursuit of legal-sized fish. Um, we, we do know that halibut are rarely released dead in the recreational fishery. Um, however, we don't have post-release mortality estimates for sublegal halibut release. Next slide. So um, during our visioning process internally with um, department staff, as we were um, thinking through priorities and goals for the fishery, we identified some areas where we recognize we can learn. Um, so these are information needs related to sustainability, habitat, bycatch, climate change, and socioeconomics. And these are with the overarching goal to assess and manage the fishery and uphold the sustainability of the resource and the ecosystem to meet our mandate under MLMA. Um, just to um, orient ourselves to sustainability. So as defined by the MLMA, this means the continuous replacement of resources, taking into account fluctuations in abundance and environmental variability. So in order for a department to evaluate that um, for any fishery, including halibut, it's important for us to regularly document the relationship between life history and catch. And it's also important for us to track the relationship between between recruitment and environmental variables, knowing that um, halibut um, can react to changes in their environment. Um, under habitat, understanding critical habitats for the various life stages of halibut is important for our fishery management needs. Um, sex specific seasonal movement among habitats allows us to gain a better understanding of stock connect connectivity. Um, and potentially preparing for um, shifts in effort depending on where halibut has moved. Um, and then 
uh, for bycatch, um, as I mentioned, it's not always easy to identify the target versus the bycatch species for recreational fisheries. So understanding the amount and composition of bycatch um, is useful information that can help us determine whether or not bycatch is at, is at acceptable levels. Um, and also documenting the catch of love, uh, excuse me, sublegal halibut will improve our understanding of bycatch impacts on the halibut resource. Next slide. And um, as I mentioned, um, both climate change and socioeconomics are two important topics. So the MLMA highlights the connection between healthy fisheries and healthy ecosystems. So understanding impacts from non-fishery factors, such as climate and environmental change, is needed for a holistic approach to fisheries management. Fluctuations in environmental and ecological con conditions can have significant impacts on the abundance of target species. So there's still a need for additional attention to the potential impacts on the halibut fishery. Um, due to changes in temperature, salinity, sea level, ocean acidification, and how that might relate to halibut recruitment, movement, and potentially changes in bycatch for the fishery. Um, and then socioeconomics, it's important for us as managers to have a clear understanding of socioeconomic conditions. So socioeconomic data on demographics, fishing practices, employment, revenue, um, fishing use patterns, all of that information can help us evaluate potential impacts of management changes on participants. And um, even environmental factors such as climate change and how that um, impacts resource abundance and research, resource distribution can also affect access to fishery resources and have potential impacts on fishery participants. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Sarah and I think we're going to be prepared, getting prepared to enter our st small groups and talk about what I just shared. Absolutely, thank you, Kirsten. That was great information um, and you laid it out so clearly, so thank you. Before we segue into small groups, we do have, you know, about five minutes or four minutes um, if there are any clarifying questions. So we are moving into small groups, not a time to ask big, complicated ideas and questions. Just if there is there anything that Kirsten said um, that you would like to be clearer before we move into our small group discussions. So just a reminder, you can wave your hand on video, you can use the Zoom wave hand, or you can send in the chat. So I will just, okay, there we go. Douglas Kaber, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, I'm gonna to ask to unmute and go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you. Uh, my question uh, actually for clarification pertains to the division between the Northern stock and the Southern stock. It was my understanding from reading both the, I believe it was 2011 and then the 2020 assessments that Southern referred to the Mexico border to Point Conception in Santa Barbara County. Northern referred to Point Conception to Point Arena in Mendocino County. And that there is no assessment for the California halibut north of Point Arena in Mendocino County. And further that the Northern and Central were used almost interchangeably in those documents. Is that still an accurate statement? Thanks, Doug. Hey, hey Sarah, I might suggest that, yep, Julia go and un unmute herself and help address that one. Yeah, hi Doug. Um, yes, so Central and Northern um, are interchangeable um, in those documents, so you're correct. And and yes, anything north of, of Conception is a part of that group. Thank you, Julia. Any other clarifying questions? Okay, 
Jeff Shester, I'll ask you to unmute and you should be able to come through. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, I, I think I heard something about a bycatch analysis being done by uh, Rick Starr. I was just wondering, um, uh, maybe I missed it, but was there a um, an anticipated date when that would be uh, made available to the process? Hi, Jeff. Um, we don't have an anticipated date yet. Um, we are still working through um, the final review um, internally. And um, this is just phase one. Rick's group with Moss Landing Marine Laboratories completed phase one of the PICATCH evaluation. So there is still um, a second phase to that, which will include additional analyses of the um, data that Rick's group helped compile. Thanks, Kirsten. It looks like we had a question come in from the chat. Given the much larger California halibut population in Southern California, how do you account for the much larger numbers of sublegals caught in Northern California? I would go ahead and suggest that that's likely because of strong recruitment in those years. So the, just a good recruitment years where a lot of young, smaller individuals are coming into the stock. Thank you, Julia. Okay, I think that's all we have time for, but let me just double check. I'm not seeing any additional raised hands. Okay, so that worked out nicely. Thank you everyone for those clarifying questions. So I'm gonna screen share once more. So now we're moving into um, the next agenda item, exploring shared priorities and concerns. And so in this agenda, we're gonna have both small and large group discussions. And we're hopeful that the webinar participants, all of you will be able to discuss a few topical questions that the project team has um, brainstormed. They thought they would be good questions to ask that cover a variety of different uh, topics, topical questions. So sustainability, bycatch, habitat, climate change, so a, a smorgasbord of categories. And this is your opportunity to both share your perspective, um, your input, and ask any additional questions that you may have about, again, the scales management process or about the halibut, halibut recreational fishery. Um, following small group discussions, uh, in breakout rooms, we are going to come back into a large group and we will go around and have a representative from each of our small groups share highlights for about three minutes of the conversations that took place in their individual rooms. Um, the breakout rooms will be recorded just like the webinar is being recorded, um, again, in order to increase transparency um, and be able to reference back to the ideas and uh, comments that were shared. And there will also be a shared notes document. You'll see this when you get into your individual room and also note that in a next steps email, um, we will be sharing additional resources, including this notes document. And so the notes will be taken um, across the breakout room. So when we move there in a moment, you will see a Google doc and it will be filled out. Um, it'll be very exciting. Um, so before we transition, these are the three rooms. We're hopeful that uh, folks have been able to review the agenda in advance of the meeting where we had the breakout rooms and we also had those discussion questions. Um, so hopefully you've had the opportunity to, to think a bit about what, you know, what it is that you have questions and concerns about. Uh, there's three breakout rooms. We tried to manage the desire to have small group discussions, which is what we heard from the stakeholder community, um, but also didn't wanna break things up too much and then um, not be able to hear you know, a, a variety of perspectives. So we have three breakout rooms, the first being commercial passenger fishing vessel owners and operators, the second being environmental, governmental, and non-governmental organizations and native nations, and the third being recreational anglers, so spear, shore, pier, um, CPFV, and private boat customers. The goal of these breakout rooms is really to allow folks to have the opportunity 
um, to share your perspectives and identify issues among your peers um, and to kind of promote free flowing conversation. So again, we are um, excited for these conversations and um, we hope you are excited as well. And before we move there, just wanted to say that we have pre-assigned folks um, based on RSVPs into the rooms that we thought were most appropriate for you. If you did not RSVP, um, not a problem at all. It's just gonna take us a few moments to connect with you personally and find out which room you would like to be placed in. So once you begin breakout rooms, you will see a message pop up on your computer from the host and it will invite you to join a breakout room. Um, to join, you just need to click join. Um, although my colleague told me that if you don't do anything, I think in 30 seconds, you automatically get placed there. So that's last resort is just, just stay patient. You will join the breakout room. Um, at this point in time, I think we can move folks into the breakout rooms and the project team welcome you to begin the discussions um, just to maximize time. And for those that are not automatically moved right now, just stay put and we will come to you in just a moment. Great, so I'm gonna open all the rooms now and folks can filter in and then everybody who isn't pre-assigned will stay here with me and I'll get you going where you're supposed to be. Okay, is everybody seeing, I see people are leaving. So I'm just gonna uh, read down the list of folks who are still in the main room and if you could unmute yourself when you hear your name or whatever, whatever. you show up as. Um, I will assign you to the room that you would like to be in. So if you're ready with what room you want to be in. Um, K. Oda. I'm not a charter operator. Yeah, you could put me in number three. Okay. Mike Peary. It's number three. Ryan Gentry. Uh, in with the recreational spear fisherman. Okay. Uh, D.E. Ritter, or D. D. Ryder, come back to you. Eddie, John, group three. Okay, uh, Mike Moser, Sherry Flumerfelt. Hi, this is Mike Moser. I just unmuted. Oh, thanks. Uh, which room would you like to go in? It doesn't matter. Okay, um, I'll put you in with recreational anglers. Um, Sherry Flumerfeld. Um, I, I can go with the environmental groups. Great. Um, Tom and Mary Marking. Um, recreational anglers, three. Great. Um, Tim Klassen. Uh, CPFB owner. Great. Um, Noah Ben Otteret. Right, group two. Sorry, group two? Yeah. Great. Uh, Shane Weir. Group three, please. Yes. Uh, Gary Burke. I'm going to be a group two. Of course, uh, Jeff Shester. I'll be in group two, please. Sean Anderson. Uh, I have a group one, please. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Bill D. Andy Rasmussen. How about Douglas Caber? Group three, please. Oh, yeah, this is Andy. Uh, number two, please. Yeah. Um, okay. And a phone number ending in 4839. Is that a recording? No, it's not. I'm on mute. Okay. Um, D Ryder. Group three. Oh, sorry. I wasn't looking. Uh, Eddie. Just my name. Mike, Bill D. Well, that's what you're asking me. Mike, 
That's right. Um, so if folks are still in here, want to drop in the chat also. Um, group one for Eddie. Eddie, group one, for yes, sure. Thank you. OK, it looks like still here in the main room is Mike, Bill D, and a phone number ending in 4839. Um, you can drop in the chat where you'd like to go if you're having trouble with your microphone. Hi, hey Darren. Um, can you hear me? Welcome to uh, the recreational fishing sector webinar for scaled management of California halibut. Everybody is currently in the small group discussion rooms. Um, if you'd like to unmute, I can assign you to a room. So the options are room one is CPFV owner operators. Group two is a discussion with government, NGOs, and Native Nations. And then room three is with recreational anglers. So is there a particular room you would like to go in for the small group discussions? Okay, I'll move you over to three. Okay, Bill, I'm moving you over right now.
Hi, uh, welcome to the uh, recreational sector discuss discussion for California Halibut Scale Management. Um, everyone is currently in the small group discussions. Can you put me so back in room three? Yes. I fell out and now I'm trying to fall back in. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Okay, there you go.
Hi, Robert. Um, are you just joining or did you fall out of a room? Um, so this is the California Halibut Scaled Management Webinar. Um, currently, all the participants and hosts are in small discussion groups and breakout rooms. Um, if you'd like to join one of those breakout rooms, I can assign you to one. Um, so I'll just read out what they are. So we have a breakout room for CPFE owner operators. Breakout room number two is for government, uh, staff, NGOs, and Native nations. And breakout room three is for recreational anglers. So if you want to uh, chat me which room you would like to go in, that would be great. Um, and otherwise, the meeting will be starting again in about 30 or 25 minutes.
Robert from Just Admit You. Uh, welcome to a recreational sector discussion about California halibut scaled management. Um, as you can see, all the participants and hosts are in small group discussions right now. Um, if you would like, I can add you into a breakout room to join one of the group discussions. Um, so I'll just read off the rooms and let me know which you would like to go into. Room one are CPFB owner operators. Room two is government, NGO, and Native Nations. And room three are recreational anglers. Um, so if you would like to message me in the chat where you would like to go or unmute yourself, I also can, you can just tell me and I can pop you somewhere. Okay, I've missed, which room should I go to? Um, uh, Recreational angler. Okay, great. I will uh, put you into the recreational angler room. So you're just going to be prompted to move to that room and you can just, yeah, accept the prompt. Um, do you have any other questions before I move you over? No. Great. Bye. I think she's echoing what oh dear it's so jarring isn't it I know I'm sure 